Looks like we are streaming now. Ms. Lugo, you may begin with your opening statement. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's remote New York City Council hearing of the Committee on Governmental Operations. At this time, would all panelists please turn on their video. To minimize disruption, please place electronic devices to vibrate or silent. Thank you for your cooperation. We are ready to begin. Let me gavel in today's meeting. Good afternoon. I am Council Member Fernando Cabrera, Chair of the Committee on Governmental Operation. I want to welcome you back, this time to a vote on the following just legislation. Proposed intro number 1872A, sponsored by myself, will require publication of a unconsolidated laws enacted by the council, unlike, consol unlike consolidated provisions of local law, unconsolidated provisions are not codifying either the administrative code or charter, but they still carry the force of law. This bill will require the law department to publish all unconsolidated local laws enacted after January 1st, 1985 that remain in effect. Unconsolidated portions of local laws enacted after that date must be present as annotations to relevant amended section of the charter or administrative code. Proposed intro number 1879A, uh, sponsored by council member Powers, will standardize the process by which the mayor designate administrating agencies. It will require that the mayor publish online and notify the speaker of every designation of an administrative office or agency within 10 days. The mayor will also be required to publish past designation online and submit them to the speaker. Proposed intro 1091A, sponsored by council member, who will require the law department to make available to, to make available on a single page on the city's website a compilation of all executive orders issued by mayors from 1974 to the present. This compilation will be published in a searchable machine readable format or formats that are capable of being downloaded in bulk and will need to indicate any executive order that has been explicitly superseded or amended by a later executive order with an annotation to the superseded or amended executive order. And finally, pre-consider a uh, reconsider RESO sponsor by Majority Leader and Council Member Combo, a resolution calling upon Congress to pass and the President to sign the Voting Rights Amendment Act of 2019, which will revise and modernize portions of the Voting Rights Act of 1965, struck down in the Supreme Court decision, Shelby County versus Holder. Before we start, I'd like to want to acknowledge that we have been joined by Council Members Rodriguez, Yeager, Marcel, Ku, Combo, Kalos, and Perkins. I would like now to turn it over to Council Member Ku to make a statement on his legislation. Thank you, Chair Cabela and all the members of the committee. Today, we are voting on my legislation, Intro 1091, which will require the city to create a searchable and machine readable combination of all mayoral executive orders from 1974 to present. This bill would also require that the combination of executive orders indicate if they have been amended or superseded by later executive orders. This bill builds off of many of the other Government, uh, government transparency bills this council has introduced in recent years that requires city documents to be posted online in a searchable machine readable format. The goal of these efforts are to increase the availability and accessibility of the city laws, rules and executive orders. The ability for the public to search executive orders should be no different than 
what is currently available on the New York City Council website, where the public can view a bill as it moves through the legislative, legislative process, amendments. Currently, the public has access to our city council documents on the council website. Executive orders are enormously important to governmental operations, as they show that unilateral decisions are made by the mayor's office. These directives are key to understanding the policies and politics of our great city, and by compiling the information into searchable machine readable formats online, it will increase transparency and promote the best practices of good government. Thank you. I urge all members to vote affirmative on this bill. Thank you, Chair Cabrera. Thank you. Thank you so much, Councilmember Kuhn. Let me pass it on now to Majority Leader Combo. I don't see her. Oh, there she is. Thank you. I'm here. Can you hear me? Perfectly. Thank you, Majority Leader. It's all yours. I just want to, again, uh, thank you so much for the opportunity to present here today. Um, as I stated earlier, this is critical legislation um, that's so important that we as a body uh, continue to press forward. As we've seen in the 2020 election, we've seen just the level of suppression that so many people faced all across this country. Approximately half of our 50 states have tried to suppress the vote through a variety of mechanisms, which made it almost impossible for so many people, particularly people of color to vote as a result of the Shelby County decision. Some of these include strict voter ID registration, proof of citizenship, purging voter rolls, reducing polling locations, which have caused people all across the country to have to wait eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 hours in the hot sun just to have an opportunity to cast a vote. And so often after waiting uh, for hours at a time, they had been denied their right to vote for a variety of reasons that were just listed. This resolution calls upon Congress to pass and the president to sign the Voting Rights Advancement Act of 2019. Esteemed civil rights icon John R. Lewis was a co-sponsor and staunch advocate for this legislation. He and so many others sacrificed themselves, their bodies, and put their respect, their decency, their lives, that of their families um, on the line so that we could all have the right to vote. We owe it to his memory to carry the torch and codifying civil rights protections for all, not just a privileged few. Now more than ever, we need the federal government to pass the Voting Rights Advancement Act. Thank you so much, Chair Cabrera and all of the members of the committee uh, for your support. And this is really the right time to do it in memory of such a great icon and political leader who has carried the torch for so long. And now it is our time to pick up that torch and bring forward this critical piece of legislation. Thank you so much, Majority Leader, and thank you for championing this resolution. Couldn't think of a better timing to do this. Uh, and I wanna thank all my colleagues uh, for uh, putting forth their bills and I'm encouraging everyone uh, to, vibe, to vote aye on all. And I'm gonna ask the clerk now uh, to uh, call the roll call. And uh, Ms. Clerk, if you'd be so kind, uh, if you could start with, with Council Member Kalos, I know he has a urgent place to go at this moment. Thank you so much. Thank you, Chair Cabrera. Good afternoon. This is the Committee on Governmental Operations conducting a vote, uh, July 27, 2020 vote on the following four items. Intros 1091A, 1872A, 1879A and a pre-considered resolution on the Voting Rights Advancement Act. We'll begin with Council Member Kalos. Aye and all. Chair Cabrera. Aye and all. Council Member Mizell. 
Rodriguez. Permission to explain my vote? Absolutely. Starting time. Uh, first of all, I th thank you, Chairman, and, and all the colleagues who are carrying this bill today, and especially Majority Leader for the resolution that you know you've been champion. I think that border suppression is a big issue, and and no doubt that many people they have died uh, defending border rights, and I feel that it is our time to add our voice from the city of York to DC at the national level to say we will never stand for border suppression and we are ready to pass this resolution and we want that void for our vote to be heard loud and clear. At the same time that I support this resolution, I also thank uh, Chairman Cabrera and also Majority Leader for also supporting the municipal voting right at the city of New York. At the city level, we have the great opportunity also to lead by example. So when we have a bill that we have 33 council members that will allow New Yorkers that have working permits and, and green card to vote in municipal election, I think that if by voting this resolution, we also embrace the bill that we have 33 council members saying, you know, let's leave by the sample, like how we cannot address no tax section without representation how we have millions of New Yorkers here that they pay the taxes and they have not been allowed to vote to elect the mayor, to vote president, the controller and the public advocate. So I'm happy to vote in all the bills and especially in the resolution that address border suppression, but I also call in my colleague that please join our effort also to move the bill that we have that will allow municipal New Yorkers to vote to elect the leaders here and let's also vote on this resolution. Let's work together also to take to the crossing line a bill that we have 33 council members, the city controller, the, the public advocate, the Brooklyn Borough President, the Manhattan Borough President, NWACP, Hispanic Federation, and more than 35 institutions saying, let's make the city of New York the first one that we can address border suppression also by allowing New Yorkers that pay the taxes to elect the local leaders. With that, I vote I don't know. Thank you so Thank much, you. Council Member. Resuming the vote with Council Member Perkins. Council Member Perkins, would you please unmute yourself? Thank you very much for bringing that to my attention. I vote aye on all. Thank you, Councilman. Councilmember Powers. Thank you. I vote aye on all. Councilmember Yeager. Aye. Our vote of seven in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and zero abstentions. All uh, items have been. Can you yes. please call Councilmember Mizell again? Certainly. Councilmember Mizell. Uh, yes. Thank you very much. By a vote of seven in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and zero abstentions, Chair Cabrera, all items have been adopted. Thank you so much. And with that, we conclude uh, today's vote. Thank you so much. And thank you to all the staff and to all the honorable council members here today. Have a great day.